Hi, this is Mr. Haslett, and I'm going to do a watercolor technique for you. Actually, a few techniques. These are resist techniques, so there is something related to them. Let me show you what I've got going. I sketched a picture of some lemonade, a bottle that a student of mine left behind. And I'm going to show you these few techniques, wet and wet, tape, salt, and wax. All of them are resist techniques, which means they make it so that the color won't go onto the page entirely. But they all do things a little bit different. So let me show you what supplies I have here. I've got some tape. I've got this paper towel to control how much water and color is inside my brush, which is a small flat brush. I've got some salt, just regular plain salt. And I've got some wax. This is paraffin wax used for canning. But you can also just take a candle if you have a home and try that too. And a container of water. And I've got my palette of colors over here to my right. So, uh, watercolor. The thing with watercolor is you really have to plan ahead. And it doesn't always do what we want it to. So I've heard it said, watercolor is all made up of happy accidents. And I think there's a lot of wisdom behind that. With learning these techniques, we can learn some things that tend to work, but you always have to watch and see what's actually happening and go from there. So you see what I did with tape? I just put it on the edges. That's because I want to have a really straight, clean edge. And so I taped it. This is going to prevent the color from going out the page, just the same way that you would do when you're painting a room, you're taping the edges of the doors or windows. I just want to make sure I put a lot of pressure here on the outside. Sometimes people don't put that tape down hard enough and the paint leaks under and that's really annoying because we put the tape down there for a clean edge. That's what we want. All right. Now for the wax, this regular paraffin wax. I wrote it over here. I'm going to try to come in a little bit. I can't get terribly exact with this chunk, but I'm going to come in a little bit and make a few dashed lines. This is supposed to be the shine. I'm trying to prepare ahead of time for it and hopefully it works. That is watercolor. I'm going to do a few breaks, dashes. I'll do a little bit on the other side, maybe a little bit down the, the bottle where the label is, not too much. And that's it for wax. It's really hard to see where it is, but that's OK. We'll see later on how it looks. Tape, done. Wax, done. Salt and wet and wet. Those two are related here. So wet and wet technique is simply this. It's a wet brush placed on wet paper. That's it. It just sounds a little fancier, I suppose, with the name. So wet brush, I've got some colors already mixed up and some water. Now my water from mixing has a little bit of color, but that's okay, it's a color I wanna use. So what I'm gonna do, I'm explaining it first because time, time is sensitive here. I'm gonna put down the color, which is mostly water, and then I'm gonna dab my brush in another color and just touch it and you'll see it shoot across the surface, except where there's wax. While it's still wet, I'm going to take a few grains of salt, not too many, just a few grains, and I'm going to place those few grains here and there. When it's totally dry, you're going to see a little bit of a burst effect from each of those pieces of salt. My thought is that it'll make it look kind of fizzy. That's the thought. All right, so here we go. Water first. Water, I'm going to always watch where the end of my brush is, so I know I'm controlling that well, which means sometimes I'm going to have to curve my hand and do a little bit of a backhand. So I go around this outside. Now it is really important where I place this water because that's going to be the limit of where the color goes. So you can't see very much here. I'm going to take some of this yellowy green that I've mixed up for the plastic bottle color. I'm just going to touch it and it, it's going to travel across. Now cool colors tend not to travel as much as warm colors like red. But that's all right. As long as I know that I can prepare for it. So here I'm pushing around the color on that wet surface. That makes it the wet and wet technique. And if I don't go all the way to the edge, that's right because it's going to travel across that surface. I know this is part of that bottle, so I'm going to get that too. And this, this base is the same color. I'm just going to paint it straight. They call this actually the uh, wet on dry technique, which as you guessed it, wet brush on dry paper. I just wanted to come out a little bit stronger, a little bit more defined. So that's why I'm painting directly. So wet on dry, wet on wet. I've got some wax. You can see where the color didn't go down all the way. I'll zoom in a little bit. You can see there's some 
bubbles there. I'll get rid of that. Okay, so wax is preventing it from going through. Now while it's still wet, I'm going to put those few grains of salt, just a small pinch, and a few grains just here and there. It's a pretty light color, so this is going to be subtle. Okay, there we go. See, so you can see how the color is gathering to that salt. The salt right now is taking up that color and then it's gonna repel it in a little burst effect. So we're gonna see just a few, hopefully fizzy spaces. Now I'm gonna get some yellow, uh, still a bit of a yellowy green. This is gonna be for the label. Now, honestly, I don't remember what color the label is, but I'm gonna go for something of a yellowy green and I'm gonna water that down because I don't want it too intense. I wanna really water it down because I really don't want it that intense. And what I need to do here is I need to make sure I'm not touching the green. I need to be very careful and have a small space here because as soon as I touch the green, it's going to have what's called a charge. It's going to leak all the way up. And sometimes that's fun to do. It's great for mid-range trees, but I really don't want to do that here. So here I'm just going to go pretty quickly. This is a watercolor sketch, so I'm not going to be too exact around here. Making sure again, I'm watching the edge of my brush. Now you notice I can even paint right over this tape. It's a good thing I have this tape here. That's gonna give me a nice straight edge, here we go. I'm gonna leave the yellow a little bit more intense down here and a little bit less up above. This is wax shine. Got some other shapes over here. Now when this is totally dry, then I can take away the tape. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna peel it back in a 45 degree angle. So I'm just gonna take up this edge and I'm gonna pull across really close to the page. And if I do that, there's something about that 45 degree angle that's gonna make it so there's less chance that I'm actually pulling up parts of the paper. So that's a trick that's really useful. All right, let's look and see what we have. One more thing, I'm gonna finish this off the top cap. It's gonna be a little bit darker. And the neck has had a chance to dry, so I should be able to go pretty close to it. I'm going to backhand around the camera, All right, and maybe something. I'm going to fade a little bit of that in there, just because, you know, I've got to balance this, this top. So I need a little bit of that darker green in there. Maybe I'll bring out some shadows here. While this is still a little bit wet, it's going to fade together in a nice way. There we go. So now that base is going to balance the top a bit more. I'll do a little bit over here on the back side of the label, just to make it a little bit different. All right, there we go. Now, again, we'll have to wait till it's dry to pull this off to see the exact effect, how it turns out. But this, these are a lot of fun. So I recommend trying it and see how it goes. And just like with all these techniques, the more you try it, the more comfortable you get with it and the better it goes. Thanks for watching.